Future Ed, the education show, was held over three days at the Dome in the north of Johannesburg. This event was jam-packed with an exciting array of expos dance, teach time seminars and conferences aimed at those in the education field. And the best part? It was all for free. Warren Murray, Public Relations Manager at Exposure Marketing, opened the show. Some of the highlights included Brian Moore from Celebrating Humanity International, who talked about diversity, management within schools, how to keep the passion alive and build a dream dynasty. Uh, we start building the dreams through dream circles. Dream circles are very, very simple. If you get a whole lot of kids um, that want to be involved in, say, the medical field, one wants to be a doctor, one another a, a nurse, uh, another an anaesthetist, another just likes hospitals, you create a dream circle. Now that dream circle doesn't matter what, what, what's, what grade uh, the youngster comes from. The dream circle is a focused group of people who can bring in mentors. Then youngsters who've been through the school that have ended up as doctors or surgeons or plastic surgeons would come and speak to them. They start to build the dream. What do I need to actually get there? They start to build the needs. Michelle Fenter Davis from Vega explored the importance of schools creating positive brand experiences for those they serve and how to use these as marketing tools. Now, it's, uh, these are just a few points of contact that we can identify for a school. Every one of these things says something about the brand. And if there isn't consistency and coherency, uh, you are not going to have a strong brand reputation out there. So the clear identity of what a brand stands for, what your school's values and ethos are, must be translated at all of these contact points. You cannot claim certain things in some areas and in others you are falling down. Pauline Malkerens covered the effectiveness of using a simple one, two, three step program to administer discipline. These techniques are useful discipline tools in all aspects of children's daily lives. Say that's one, that's two, that's three take five. This is a huge difference from what we usually go through, right? Bobby, I said get off that table right now! That's a, you can see the difference, hey? So, um, what this is going to give you is a very, very, very clear sense of control. And it will also give your child a chance to redirect their behavior. So, in, I know it sounds crazy, but it does work. That's why it's called 123 Magic. Now, using 123 works because it's non-negotiable authority. The kid can't bargain with you. Kid can't say, I promise I'll be good. I promise I won't do it again. It, there's none of that. That's one, that's two, that's three. And we're done. Timers. Use this. Timers. I love, there are two things in life I cannot live without. A kitchen timer and a good bottle of red wine. This timer will save you so much breath because the kid can't come up to you and be like, two minutes? That's such a long time, two minutes? Pop that thing on and say, when Mr. T so good with the little littles too. When that timer goes off, your timeout is finished. Okay. Because then the child will realize, I can't negotiate with the timer. Timer won't let me out early for good behavior. When the timer goes off, the timer goes off. For instance, um, I had a new child start with me this week. He has uh, literally five words, mommy, daddy, doggy, eat, those kinds of things. And so he screams. He screams a lot. And this has worked with his parents. This has worked at the four previous schools he's been at. He's five. So I started doing one, two, three with him. He started screaming. And I said, no screaming. He said, I can't, I won't, I won't, I won't put you through what I've been through this week. And I said, that's one, screaming, that's two. Okay, that's three, we've got three minutes. And I put him in a chair and he sat there screaming for three minutes straight. And then the timer went off and I said, okay, we're done. And he's like, ah. oh, and he just got up and walked out. So he sat back down, he's doing some work, got a little difficult, so what did he start doing? He started screaming again. I said, that's one, that's two, that's three, we've got three minutes, took him right back. He got up out of the chair. I said, nobody, when the timer goes off, put him back down. 
and he's screaming, looking at me like, what are you doing? And I, I didn't make eye contact. I just kind of sat there, waited, waited, waited. Timer went off. I said, OK, timer went off. We're finished. Walked him back out. OK, this kid, he's five, no language. Next time he started screaming, I said, that's one. He goes, eh. Oh. Hmm, okay. And he just went about his work. Andre Vermeulen talked about how the different neurological learning styles can influence a learner's performance. He also showed how the brain of each individual works and how this can affect how learners process information. Now the point is, do we have enough brain power to really keep up in this frightening world that we just looked at those statistics? And the answer is, undoubtedly, yes you do. Janice Simmons is a counselling psychologist and branch owner of Equal Zeal and in this session she brought attention to the pressures that modern life is putting our children under and the risks thereof. Are we expecting too much? There is a picture of what one of our branches or our studios look like. Um, the reason why we want to show you what it looks like is that um, we want to create the feeling of what it is for children and families when they come to our centres and they, the, the feeling that they experience when they're there. So, like you see, it says nothing, every, anything can be solved with a bit of imagination. So imagination is our hugest, hugest tool that we use to see growth and development in our children. Um, then how the program works is once you've done this assessment, you'll come through, um, the parents will come through, we'll have a consultation and we'll decide on which program is best for this child and how do we tailor make a, child, a, a program that's going to be best for the child. So there's no one program that any child will follow because as you'll see, I'll show you a copy of our assessment, every child has different areas where they will need assistance and we will focus on those areas where they need more um, input. Then we do a post-evaluation, which is quite interesting because after, normally after a year or after six months, we can visually see the changes that the children have made just by making positive changes to their lives. Kindle Kaba, editor at The Teacher, introduced The Teacher as a resource and support platform for teachers around the country. Pindele, what do you hope to gain from being here at Future Ed? We believe that um, since we are in the education space, it is important for us to interact very closely with the teachers. And what better place to be than at the Future Ed where you can get a person-to-person -person kind of conversation going on and actually finding out what kind of resources teachers are after. The teacher as a publication really prides itself as really softening up copy, taking all the academic stuff that uh, is published in periodicals and, and all of the hard academic uh, publications and making it accessible to teachers because sometimes teachers do not have time to, unless they are studying for a particular degree, do not have time to actually go through the hard reading. They want something that they can use practically in class and the teacher does that for the educators. So we hope that we will be able to find out, you know, sitting in, in a little corner and deciding that this is what content teachers are looking for is not nearly enough. You really need to get it from the horse's mouth and hear what they, the, the, the kind of support they're really interested in, in getting. So we hope to draw from the wisdom of teachers. That's fantastic. And tell me, um, your publication, is it nationwide? Is the, what is the spread of your publication? Our publication is distributed nationally. It goes into over 28,000 schools and we reach over 100,000 teachers. That is the circulation number that I am giving to you. But in terms of really readership, I promise you it might be fourfold since one copy, as I understand it, the publishing industry, one copy gets handed down to three more other people. So we're hoping that we're reaching all 400 and something thousand teachers. Dr. Richard Hayward has focused his life work on helping schools to become places of outstanding quality. So what we're saying is to stay motivated. And you know when you look at my handwriting, the one day the, the one day the boy came to me and he said to me, he said, did I qualify as a teacher? So I said, ah, yeah, I did qualify as a teacher. He says, no, I'm sure you qualified as a teacher, but how do they read your writing? Are you with me? But set yourself goals. And what we're saying here is goals. 
And the first obvious goal is academic, isn't it? So that if you are, for example, you've got a BA, then you say, why can't I do a BA honours? Or if I've got an honours, why can't I try a master's? So that's a pro academic goal at the university where they talk a lot, you pay a lot, and they give you low marks. Are you with me? All right, that's a university. They talk a lot, you pay a lot, and they give you low marks. But you go, that's academic, isn't it? Another one is professional goals. In other words, that you've got diplomas, but you say, why don't I do an ACE course? You know, educational management. Or like here, there are a whole lot of things to do with computers, isn't it? And maybe you say, well, I'll go and do a computer course, isn't it? And then, of course, we spoke about other goals, where you have goals where you want to change your grade or subject, so that we have goals there. Professor Khalil Osiris stirred up a crowd and voiced many concerns regarding behaviour, thought and values within the South African teaching community. It was apartheid, 1940s, Fort Hare, that produced the leaders that you now celebrate as the intellectual giants of South Africa, Africa and the world. You're not producing that kind of intellectual giant today. And we know why. Yes, it's deep and complicated, but guess what? You have some good in your own history, in the soil of your own conflict, that you can use in your own interest. But if you do not open yourselves up to that, it's gonna be very difficult to get to where you wanna go. America, blacks in America, I know you think we're a lot over there, but those of you who haven't been, we're only 13% of the population in America. Blacks that you see, I know you see a lot of us on TV. We're only 13% of America's population. In other words, we're about like the Afrikaner in South Africa. Imagine that. So, but here's the deal. As bad as that may seem, we produced an African president called Barack Hussein Obama. So, the education we had under that oppression did something good. Amanda Martin talks about practical parenting. You know, the other, the other issue, you've, you've touched on a big issue because that's also like the challenge. I mean, even in Johannesburg, you've been to, have you been to Alex and you immunize your child and you sit there, literally you arrive at seven o'clock in the morning and you're in a big, you know, big hall, you know, and uh, you're lucky if you get through it. You're lucky if the, your child gets immunized that day. Like you say, you've got to take another day off. What I would like to see is um, the principals of the schools actually going to the, the clinics and saying, come to us. It's not just good enough that at grade one, you come and you check the card. We need to maybe have some sort of relationship you get the kids together, you get their cards all together, and we say, look, I know that you know limit, things are limited, but we need, you know exactly what we need, and maybe once, absolutely, all they need to do is bring their little stuff along, and then just go jab, 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 jab. That's all they need to do. So there needs to be that open communication. And then Ken Resnick took his listeners on a thought-provoking journey through the role of a parent in unleashing a child's potential. And then we've got a bigger and a growing group of children. And I use the word because a lot of this, the Afrikaans actually describes it better. But children that are in disharmony with their educators. Something's not right. They're miserable. They're never happy. They whine. They don't try. They, they just seem to opt out. Whether it's the, the educators would include teachers and the parents. So it becomes a big problem. Let's have a look a little bit at that particular thing. There we've got it. How do we know when our kids have got problems? Often we have an idea at home, the kids act out, but normally we pray a lot because any kid that's got problems, we call them children with barriers to learning. Whether it be a learning problem, a behavior problem, there's a barrier that's stopping them learning. That is the PC term, okay? Which I don't think is a bad term because barriers can be taken down. Right, so let's have a look. How do we know? We normally get a call from the teacher. The teacher will phone us, 
tell us we're rather worried about your child. We think they got ADHD. They're very disruptive. They don't finish their work. We've got the whole story laid out by the teacher. But now, what are you supposed to do? Short of trading the child in or giving the child away, what are you supposed to do? Well, they tell you, you know what? Your child needs to go for an intervention of sorts, which we do. And from that intervention, all or some of those recommendations come out. Okay, do you ever see parenting? You never see parenting. Parenting does not feature in these recommendations. But this is how we train. So if we have a look at this, there it all is. That's where it stops. All training, whether it's teachers, psychologists, it stops there. And it doesn't always work. I must tell you, it doesn't, often doesn't work. Especially if you're medicating kids. Then what do you do? You've got to go back to square one and start again. But I've got a question mark. And what is that? What about those problems? Their behavior, the emotional issues that they've got, bullying. Bullying is a big problem at schools today, but bullies are not born. And what about the victims? Victims often well aren't well socialized. That has to do with parenting because bullies target victims. They won't target anybody that they feel will stand up to them. Olani Machola spoke of teaching with love and care and how his experiences have helped him present training and workshops on teacher development and teaching techniques. That imagine if a Coca-Cola that you bought in, in, in Cape Town tasted differently to a Coca-Cola that you bought in Gauteng. What would that say about the brand Coca-Cola? Inconsistent, right? So as a teacher, children need to experience you in one way only. When they think of you, they need to think of you in a particular uh, way. Right? In other words, the image they have of you, it has to be the same, whether you've been teaching for five years or 10 years or 20 years. Unlike our teacher, when we were taught, we, we didn't know what we were dealing with. And then as a result, we, we didn't trust him. And we didn't want to trust him because you weren't exactly sure what that meant. Whereas if you are the kind of teacher that is kind, if you are kind, you have got to be kind for the entire duration of, of your teaching practice. You cannot be kind in 2012 and only to be something else in 2013. Are you with me? A kind teacher is kind forever. A creative teacher is creative forever. You can't be creative today and then tomorrow you're not. You can't be welcoming today and then next year you are something else all together. So it's, it's, it's very important to be consistent in your, in your practice, to be consistent in your behavior, to be consistent in, in, in your temperament, to be consistent even when, when you use different resources for, for whatever reason. Future Ed 2012 was the coming together of many passionate individuals who are all focused on improving education for the future generation.